Hello, ideas friends. Welcome to this podcast about seborrheic keratosis like melanomas. So this is the scenario. Sometimes we know that melanomas can look like seborrheic keratosis. And indeed, it was demonstrated that around 1% of those bios biopsied sepkei-like tumors were indeed melanomas. And only half of them were excised to rule out melanoma. As in these examples, you can see two uh, quite similar tumors, but on the left you have a seborrheic keratosis and on the right this is a melanoma. And to make it more difficult, we know that sometimes seborrheic keratosis can also present very unusual dermoscopic patterns, as you can check also in the podcast about unusual uh, presentations of seborrheic keratosis. As for example, in this example, this is a seborrheic keratosis, but of course, this was proven by histopathology examination because uh, it, it looked like a melanoma. So this is the, the most challenging cases. You know, you must know that subcase can hide and can simulate other tumors. And the most, probably the most difficult cases are on facial and lentigo-like lesions because they can look like uh, lentigo maligno, those subcases uh, heavily pigmented or clonal subcases that can resemble uh, BCCs or melanomas, and of course those inflamed or activated subcases that can resemble uh, squamous cell carcinomas or melanomas. So this is the point. We know that subcases can look like melanomas and melanomas can look like uh, subcases. So we conducted this study, uh, uh, reviewing all of these uh, more than 100 uh, proven melanomas that clinically uh, uh, resemble a SEP case. And as suspected, what we found is dermoscopically, these lesions show uh, the combination of the features usually seen in melanocytic tumors and also these features typically seen in seborrheic keratosis. And here you can see one example of this lesion uh, on a patient, uh, plenty of other, uh, other seborrheic keratosis, and on dermoscopy you can see that this lesion uh, presents um, a like cyst, some uh, comera-like openings, a uh, very um, well-demarcated border but also you can see that this lesion presents a pigment network, some globules and some shiny white structures. So uh, we demonstrated that almost half of the lesions showed a kind of uh, usually seen uh, melanocytic criteria. 30% of these lesions can present a kind of usually feature usually seen in set case and very importantly, 40% of the lesions present a kind of atypical vessels. So most of the cases, more than 80% of these series, can be easily diagnosed by dermoscopy, as in these four examples that you can uh, easily detect that these are melanomas, so this is no problematic. But the point is that about 18% of the cases also by dermoscopy could uh, mimic a SEPK, as in these two cases where clinically and uh, dermoscopically are really challenging cases. In these examples, for example, we could study and identify what were uh, the most uh, the pitfalls or the, the features that can make you miss a melanoma as a seborrheic keratosis uh, tumor. And the main important features to take into account are the abrupt borders, the fissures and ridges, and the hyperkeratotic scale. So these were the features that, that uh, can make you miss a melanoma if you only take, uh, pay up attention on these features. On the contrary, we could identify what were the most important uh, criteria to correctly diagnose these melanomas. And one of the most important is the blue-black rule. So if you see this keratotic lesion, but with the presence of blue-black, you must be very careful. 
this is one example and indeed uh, in addition to this blue black sign you can find also pigment network and pseudopods as you can see. Other very important feature is the presence of regression. In this case also you can see the blue black and regression feature so you can uh, at least suspect that this could be an inflamed lesion and this uh, need to be ruled out a melanoma. Other feature very important is the presence of atypical vessels. Any kind of vessel different to a herpin vessel should be taken into account in uh, when you are facing to uh, uh, facing these uh, keratotic tumors. So in summary, in our series, you can see here in this schematic that most of the cases uh, were easily diagnosed by dermoscopy, 80%. But in less than 20%, you need to pay attention in, uh, carefully to, in half of them, detect the, uh, at least one recognizable criteria such as pigment network, globules, blue-white veil, blue-black sign, or pseudopods. But there were other cases most diffi more difficult, and in this, at least in this 4% of cases, if you pay attention, you can find atypical vessels or regression features, but the bad news is that less than 4% of the lesions were this kind of really, really difficult lesions because indeed these lesions were showing no criteria at all, as in this case, for example, on the forearm of, of, of a lady. So, how to manage these uh, challenging cases? So the main clues to better recognition could be one, optimize the quality of the imaging. When you are facing keratinizing and pigmented lesions, you need to uh, improve the quality of the image with immersion oil or, and with proper light. Second, you need to examine the whole and the parts. And third, you need to pay special attention to the periphery because it's where you can find easily melanocytic features. So these are two examples where you cannot uh, have a good quality image. On the contrary, here you can see that in this lesion, very keratotic lesion, you can find easily blue-black sign, blue-white veil and globules. So this was melanoma. This is another example where you can see that uh, you, you don't be led by the obvious comedo-like openings because these lesions also present other melanocytic features. And the good news is that even in, on non-experts' uh, hands, dermoscopy can really impact your detection of these difficult lesions. And we demonstrated in this study that dermoscopy uh, improved significantly the, uh, the diagnostic sensitivity for these very difficult lesions even in less experienced evaluators. So the conclusions uh, should be that dermoscopy, in addition to clinical examination, dermoscopy makes the diagnosis of SEP case much easier and also improves the detection of challenging cases such as these SEPK like melanomas. And my take-home messages should be dermoscopy should be recommended to any professional carrying out cosmetic procedures and the histopathological confirmation should be considered when you find a kind of discordance or inflammation in front of a keratotic lesion. Second, when you have a very heavily pigmented and solitary lesion, when you find this unclear melanocytic criteria, or when you find blue-white or blue-black sign in a mildly doubtful SEPK. Thank you very much.